Corporate Derivative when the cultures are clashing. Corporate cultures are clashing in terms of, let's say, mergers, acquisitions, let's say, taking over the service organizations. Ah. So how, how do you, you know, what, how do you see that one? So the question is around the clashing corporate cultures. Um, I don't think any organization in the world has one corporate culture. Uh, I think every organization, especially a large company that has a global footprint, has many corporate cultures, and that's okay. Right? I, don't, I don't think that's a problem. Um, so in my book, I talk about 10 things that employees care about when it comes to corporate culture. Now, I won't go through all 10, but some of them are positive brand perception, having a manager that acts as a coach and a mentor, a diversity inclusion. All of these things are obviously important. But if you have a culture clash, obviously it's important to understand why that culture clash is, is happening. Um, and then devoting additional resources to trying to fix it. So Cisco, again, the example that I mentioned. Um, they decided that they wanted to get rid of annual performance reviews. And so they made that decision and three days later they made an announcement to the whole company that they were going to get rid of it, right, in three days. But they had a lot of employees in India and in China that were not comfortable with that because those types of parts of the world are a little bit more hierarchical and there was a lot of um, kind of clashing in there. And so in that situation, what Cisco did is they devoted extra resources, extra training, extra time into helping those employees understand what they should be doing and why this investment is being made. So, I think whenever we see culture clashes, it's important for us to understand why those things are happening and to put additional resources and troops on the ground to help make that solution happen. But the reality is that inside of an organization, you know, if a culture does clash, it could be because you have a manager in place who shouldn't be there. It could be because you have people that just aren't, you know, kind of adapting and willing to go with the way the organization is going. And at that point, you have a choice to make, right? And so does that individual. Is that person worth fighting for? Or is that person no longer uh, a good fit for the company? But if you, have a, if you have a bigger company buying a small, lean, fast company, they will have different approaches to things. Yep. So what happens then when, you, when they come into that big, slower, perhaps big ship moving in this direction? Well, look at GE, right? I mean, GE has hundreds of thousands of employees around the world, and they have invested millions of dollars into creating a lean startup approach inside the company. Now, they didn't acquire necessarily a smaller company to do this. They brought in external people to try to help this big, slow-moving company move faster. So if a company like GE can do it, um, which is you know, manufacturing, I mean, it's how old school of a company can it get? I think if an organization like GE is able to invest in this kind of lean startup and agile methodology, IBM has done the same thing, then really any organization around the world can do it. 